Hello, this is uh, Ruth Pozuelo from Kerbal.com. I recently cre created a new dashboard in Power BI together with Google Analytics uh, that is meant to help me find new ideas for my blog or my business. To be able to use uh, this dashboard, you actually need to have a search box like this one, and then you need to configure site search in Google Analytics. It is very, very easy, and here is a, a guide on how to do it, step by step, simple. And uh, there will be a link down below to how to configure it, in case you don't have it, probably you already do. So, if you have those things, you can create this dashboard. This is a very, very, very easy dashboard to create in Power BI. Actually, it's extremely easy. But it is extremely useful too. This uh, dashboard is divided in uh, four or five visualizations, and we will go through them one by one so you can see what you can actually do with it. So, I want to tell you that I have also, if you want to take it a little bit uh, slower and one step at a time, you can actually go to curval.com and here you will see in text exactly the same thing I'm going to show you in the video. You will also be able to download the Power BI file if you want to use or reuse this, um, uh, this dashboard. Uh, so, let's jump into it. So let's go through the first visualization. Uh, what we have here is a search term and searches. What is a search term? If you don't know what the search term is, you can actually go to our Google Analytics dictionary. And now I have filtered by all the dimensions and metrics for internal search. And here you have the search term. How do I have it opened here? And with the search term is basically the exact exact word of, or a set of words that the visitors and those when searching your site. So it basically is what they actually write here. And if we go back here, searches is the number of times they actually search for that search term. So for example here, they search 26 times for its term, search term, WordPress. So, what can I do with this information? So, the first thing you can do is find ideas for a new content. How? For example, what I would do is sort uh, alphabetically and then scroll down a little bit. And here I find something interesting. I have to say that this dashboard is for a site that helps users set up and configure a Synology server. It's just a home a server for home use. So what you can do with those servers is you can host your own WordPress site. And here is somebody that actually wanted to know how to automatically update WordPress. I do not have a blog post on this, so this is actually a great idea for a new blog post. So thank you very much for the person that searched for that. So I would definitely do it. There's not a lot of searches. It's only two times that it's been searched, but I know that this would be a popular thing because uh, it's not very, very intuitive how to do it automatically and it will help a lot of people. So this is an example. Another thing you can do with the, this visualization is if you filter or sort by number of searches and you go to the highest one, you will see WordPress. And there's a lot of people in this site searching for WordPress content. So if I want to increase the number of visitors to my site, probably if I write more WordPress blog posts, I, I would get uh, more happy users. So this is example of, a good example of a topic. FTP will be the same. If I write a lot of blog posts on how to configure FTP and 
you know, all that kind of thing. So probably we'll get more visitors. Another thing you can do here is to, just by scrolling through the search terms, to find what people are actually interested in, interested in when going into your site. What extra searches it triggers. And that will give you an idea of what they want from your site, but it will also give you an idea if they are searching for things that are absolutely not related or you think that should not be related. For example, if, let's say they have a flower shop and they are searching by for chocolates all the time. And nowadays it's not that strange that you can buy flowers with chocolates together, especially with like some Valentine's and that kind of stuff. So if you see that your visitors are searching for chocolates, that will give you an idea that maybe that's something that you can offer on your site if you're not doing it already. If on the other hand they are searching for cars and you have a flower shop, maybe you should check your pages very, very carefully. It could have been um, hacked. So somebody is uh, putting bad keywords on your site or something else could be happening but this will give you an idea of what the users are expecting to see on your blog and are actually finding or not finding it. Another thing that you should do is to go, if we again sort alphabetically, go to C and search for contact. And make sure that contact is not here, and make sure the telephone number is not here, and make sure the address is not here. If it is, it means that your contact details are not easily available, and that could be a problem. You might lose their patience and go to some other business. So, you, you have some pages that you definitely want people to find, make sure that they are not in the search box, because otherwise it's an indication that something is not really working. Now, if we move down here, we have a uh, visualization that says search term, start page, and we have here searches. Can make this a little bit smaller? So, what this does, this sort alphabetically again. If you remember, we have here. Let me see what it is. Automatically update WordPress. So we go down here and we should see the same. Automatically update WordPress. But now we have start page also. If you don't know where start page is, you can again go to our Google Analytics dictionary and search by it. So the start page is the page where the user initiated an internal search on your website. So if I start searching here for next page, then this page would be my start page. Okay. So is the page that prompted visitors to perform a search on your site? And that can indicate two things. Either that the page generates an interest or curiosity on your visitors. Let's say that they are searching for roses and then they start to search by yellow roses then maybe you should have roses with colors available right away. But it could also mean that the users did not find what they wanted and that's why they started the search. So if we go back we see this automatically update WordPress. We see that they started searching for that when they were into my blog post to manually update a new version of WordPress technology. So they were reading the how to update WordPress manually and of course they wanted to update it automatically. So if I create a blog post on how to automatically update WordPress, I should put a link here. First, it will promote my new content, but also it will make it very, very easy to find for users. So if 
you know, Google has ranked that manually updates the new version of WordPress higher. We can still easily find the automatically update WordPress with that searching on my site so much. So this is what this is useful just to promote your content and make, make sure that it's easy, uh, easy to find. Um, what I have here is a number of searches by date. And the reason why I have this is because I probably check this like once a week and I don't want to check all the search terms again. I want to know okay, which new search, term, search terms came in the last month or you could have it last week. If you have a lot of search terms you could have it every day. So you can click on it and then it will filter everything so you can just concentrate on new things coming. And then if you see something interesting, you can see, okay, this has been repeating. And then you can see that too. So extremely useful if you use these very, very frequently. Here you can see the total number of searches. Nothing strange with that. And this is a word cloud. You probably are familiar with word cloud is but uh, I will explain it very very shortly. Um, let's go here. If we go to this visualization we see that WordPress is the most searched term on the site 26 times. But if I go to my word cloud I see some other terms I see quick connect which has the highest frequency. So what this does is it goes here and it sees search for which words are repeated the most. Not as a phrase, but as a word. So quick connect appears the most. Not really, but I'll explain why in a second. And then we'll have password, which is not here either. So this will measure the frequency, frequency of the words. And this will measure the frequency of the search terms. It's extremely useful to have both. Now, if we click on this visualization, you will see here stop words. I always, always, always turn it on. These stop words are like the common words in the uh, English dictionary. So you will have but, uh, and the. So those are not really useful words. You don't want to have, to have them in your cloud. There is already a list in there, so you would we'll just remove them. Extremely useful, turn it on always. And then it gives you possibility to turn on off other words. For example, this is a Synology blog, that's a site, website. So, of course, Synology would be the most used term if I remove it. Let's see. There you go. Not very useful. I know that Synology is a term that would come up. A lot. So what I do is I put it in here. That was another term I didn't want. And then I see 5,000. I know what that is and I don't want it either. And there you go. And then if you continue putting words, like for example I could put quick connect and I can write password in here, you will see the other words pop up. The ways I think these clouds are a little bit messy to read on. You can also make it bigger. So, this is it for today. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the video. You can download the Power BI in our website, uh, the link, the Power BI file in our website. The, Link is uh, down below. And um, let, let us know if you have any questions in your comments. And we will come back soon with new useful dashboards. Bye bye!